Hi everybody, this is Tracy Cornelius. Welcome to our pregnancy vlog week 28. So this week has been a huge week. It's a huge week because so many changes have taken place. Amazing how much difference really a week can make. So first off, um, I'd previously mentioned that one of the best things about the second trimester is the fact that, you know, you can still feel the baby moving, you can do all of this type of thing, but you're not really feeling that uncomfortable. Um, and we really only kind of went into the third trimester last week. But already this week, it's becoming a lot more uncomfortable. I really feel like the baby has had a growth spurt <clears throat> because I'm... Um, I guess I'm feeling a lot more restricted. There are things that I go to do that I find out that I can't do as easily anymore, such as bending down, uh, even bending down and putting shoes on. And you really wouldn't kind of thought that right now um, that would be much of an issue, but it's getting more uncomfortable. And if I bend down for a long period of time, obviously the baby doesn't like it and it kind of hurts a little bit. So avoiding that. Um, trapped nerves are definitely happening a lot more I had sciatica a couple of times um, in my back and down my buttocks um, <laughs> which is just wonderful um, <clears throat> so yeah so all of those kind of things are really it just feels like this week they've kind of massively taken off other things that have happened are uh, the need um, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that I really needed to get some more maternity bras and this week it was like okay it's paramount it's really uncomfortable and that type of thing so I will have a post with regards to um, bra fittings and periods of time and that type of thing because obviously they grow over a, a period of time so I'm 28 weeks now and now still wouldn't be the best time for a fitting for um, nursing although I have kind of chanced it it was the same price for maternity bras as it was for nursing so I've um, got the nursing ones if they manage to still fit around about that time then great they probably won't um, where especially when my milk comes in that type of thing but they are more than likely to after um, a period of time once everything's kind of settled down a little bit and that type of thing so um, it just made sense to make sure that again I've got something which is dual purpose other aspects that are happening um, I guess it, again just due to the fact that the baby is uh, getting bigger it's f more frequent trips uh, to the toilet that type of thing I think that's going to be a recurring theme from now on um, I did also mention that last week now if you're in the UK and this is not your first baby um, so like two onwards then this will be the week that you will also see your midwife for a check and um, I have mine tomorrow I also still need to have a glucose test that is happening next week um, I think there's been a delay in mine just purely because of communication issues with the move and everything else. Um, a glucose test I'm, I have purely because my BMI is um, over 30, so therefore it's kind of compulsory. Well, it's not compulsory. Um, they advise you to have it done. You can say no if you want to, but at the end of the day, it's the health of your baby and as much as I absolutely detest it, I had it with Alina, first time I needed it uh, within a pregnancy. Um, and I really don't actually have a lot of sugar, so to have that much in a drink, it was awful. I felt like I needed to go for a run. I've just, I felt like my whole body was completely hyper and did not like that whatsoever. Also, I'm not the greatest person in hospitals. I don't like hospitals. I can stay in them for a certain period of time and then I just, it's almost like feeling claustrophobic. I just get to the stage where I go, right, I have to get out right now. And it makes me really panic. Um, it's more the smell of them than anything else. So having to also stay and wait in a hospital for two hours is gonna be tough for me, uh, especially as Mark won't be able to be there because he'll be with the girls. So 
hey, you never know, I might do a video so that you guys can just uh, keep my mind off of it while I'm there. Um, so yeah, so that's next week. So midwife appointment tomorrow, uh, glucose test next week. Other things, um, cramp has definitely got a lot worse. Now, um, I have also noticed that I haven't been been taking my multivitamins as much so I don't know if that also makes a difference so I'm getting back to taking that daily um, just to see if that will also help another marked difference for me personally is just the fact that I am so ridiculously tired right now um, and that would suggest to me um, what my gut instinct was that the baby is literally having a growth spurt um, I do tend to feel a lot more tired when that happens sorry that the phone keeps moving again um, <clears throat> so yeah really 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 tired so I'm struggling at the moment to um, kind of be awake enough uh, even in the evenings I do tend to work at home in the evenings obviously when the girls go to bed so um, that's, that's kind of like a must for me, um, but it has been a lot more of a struggle and getting up in the mornings has just been, I feel like death warmed up. <laughs> um, so yes. Um, okay. So anything else apart from, um, apart from that, just thinking. It's really hard. I know what I'm going to say before we uh, talk and then I get onto the video and it all goes out of my head. Um, not really um, a lot more. Oh, there is, um, there's a lot more times where I pull all my stomach muscles. And actually, that is a very normal thing within pregnancy. So if this does happen to you, it is quite painful, but don't panic. So things like if you cough, if you sneeze, um, anything else like that, you can often find that your stomach muscles will really pull. And let me just show you what I mean. So in this section here, uh, you just find that yeah they all kind of pull together and it was really quite painful it can be a little bit shocking the first time that that happens if you haven't experienced that before and that will happen quite often um if you've had uh, a cesarean or anything else like that then you will have those issues again afterwards so similar type of things if you know that you need to cough it's kind of holding a cushion close to you or bending forward a little bit just to um, put your muscles in a different position and then cough obviously sneezing tends to happen mightily quickly so not really much that you can do sometimes you'll also find that this will happen when you turn over in bed it just again it pulls all the stomach muscles um, and it takes a little while for them um, to kind of release that pain. And again, that's down to the hormone relaxing, um, which relaxes all the ligaments in and around the muscles. So like I mentioned, it is natural, but it can be quite painful. And if you haven't experienced it before, it can be also quite shocking. Um, what else? So I've already mentioned cramp. Um, again, you will find on my blog any kind of additional parts of information and also the links to the previous week. So if I've mentioned things in the previous weeks, such as cramp was uh, the week before last, so that would be week 26, there was a lot of information and different resources of where you can find additional um, facts and suggestions and that type of thing. Um, Again, um, at this stage, it's also much more kind of looking towards the future. I think you suddenly get to a stage where you think actually 12 weeks until the baby's here really actually isn't that long. Um, in some ways it seems ages and in other ways it seems not very long at all. So trying to work out how things are going to go together and all that type of thing is um is also quite good um i will also have a feature i think i may have mentioned this before that from it's actually going to be from this week onwards i'll be cooking one extra meal per week um to ensure that we have um a number of meals available for when the baby arrives 
because one thing I do know from experience is that no matter how many children you have, it always shocks you at how much time a newborn baby takes. I remember with Alina in particular, um, I just completely forgotten the length of time that you're feeding for and that genuinely does not make any difference if you're breastfeeding or bottle feeding. The feeding process in itself, in amount of time, is just the same. Um, <clears throat> if you're bottle feeding then of course you can pass that responsibility on to somebody else if they're around but if your partner is working that type of thing then it's still coming down to you you're still really needing to sit so that the baby is relaxed all of those type of things so being able to take the pressure off and being a little bit more organized really does pay dividends and also you're never really 100 percent sure exactly what's going to happen when the baby arrives for example, with Alina, she was born extremely quickly, unlike my other children. And because she was born so quickly, it sounds a bit disgusting, but she wasn't squished, <laughs> technical term, um, which meant that most of the gunk, if you like, that ha um, is inside a baby's body, especially within lungs, etc., um, usually when they're going through the birth canal, that kind of gets squeezed out along the way. For Alina, that didn't happen. So sleeping for her was very difficult for a very long period of time because she needed to constantly get out all of this stuff that was inside of her um it was horrible it was miserable um I've never known sleep deprivation like it so having a little bit of organizational um parts now in preparation for when the baby is born can really help just in case you have anything like that or if your baby happens to be very colicky or if they suffer from reflex you know it just means that you've got um, a little bit more preparation and you're not caught unawares so a lot of that type of thing I will do a, uh, an additional vlog on so that you can see exactly the plan um, it's going to be quite a way off of um, preparing for the hospital bag that type of thing however it's around about the next few weeks that i'll start purchasing bits and pieces that i might need um so that i can just get them it doesn't seem like a massive big deal then well that's it that's week 28 oh we'll just do the little um bump part so we are yeah like i said week 28 so um we can see that actually there's still quite a lot of room here you know still quite low down over the next few weeks that's going to be growing you're also then going to find that your ribs will be um parting to make sure that there is a lot more room for the baby um over that period of time that can also increase um breathlessness and all of those type of things this is also why now is quite a good time if you do want to get new bras make sure that you have got the right back size because your um, rib cage is going to be expanding and it's going to need to move so therefore you want to make sure that things are really comfortable well once again thanks very much for watching if you like this please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i will catch up with you guys soon take care bye